this is an, an absolutely classic problem. It's like every first semester of physics class, whether trig based or calculus based, you do this problem. Um, I have a roller coaster cart uh, going down the track. And I didn't give you the mass because hopefully it cancels out. And it's going to fly through this loop. And it's going to do that at just the minimum velocity to stay stuck to the track. And what that means at that point, if it's right at the minimum velocity where it almost falls off, so it kind of loses touch with the track just for an instant, that means that n is equal to zero. The normal force is zero there. Then as the cart drops a little bit lower, gravity's not helping out to point uh, to give you some centripetal force directly at the center, and the normal force starts to grow again because we require some more center pointing force. All right, so at my minimum velocity, the normal force is zero there. And I'm trying to figure out how high does it have to start to just purely under the force of gravity end up going at the right speed to barely make it through the loop. Any height greater than that, and it will easily make it through the loop. So we're going to split this up into a couple chunks, and I'm going to look at the minimum speed issue. All right, so my cart is going through the loop. And just barely has enough speed to make it through the loop, which means the normal force has dropped to zero, and yet I'm still moving on a circular path. That means that gravity is providing all the centripetal force. I'm going to go ahead and color code the way I normally do and say that V is here. It's, I'm going to call it V min. So again, my force analysis here is that with normal force equal to zero, I have only one center pointing force, and that's the force of gravity. And that must be causing the centripetal acceleration. So we apply Newton's second law. F net equals MA. And my net force is just MG pointed down. I'm using downward as my positive direction because that's the way A points equals M V squared over R. And the masses cancel out. And I find out that my velocity here and I'll call it V min, because it corresponds to the normal force being zero, is going to be the square root of GR. And it was a capital R in the original problem, so I changed it to that for this answer. All right, so we'll, use, we'll hang on to that, and we'll use it in a bit. So now let's apply energy conservation, where this is my initial state, and this is my final state. So E initial equals E final. And initially, this cart is at rest, and it's at a height of H. I'm going to use the ground as my reference point, so I'm going to call that 0, which means the y-coordinate here is going to be H, and it means the y-coordinate here, this is a little bit tricky, is going to be 2R. Twice the radius is one diameter for the loop. And so E initial is just going to be mg times the initial y coordinate, which is h. And then e final is going to be an mg times the final y coordinate, which is 2r, plus the kinetic energy. All right, and then it's just a matter of cleaning things up. And what I'm trying to solve for here is what height corresponds to this thing barely making it through the loop. The m's do cancel. That's a relief. And then I have um, GH is 2GR plus 1 half the square of the minimum speed. Well, when I square that, it undoes the square root, and I get a GR. Now all the Gs cancel. And I have H equals 2R plus another 1 half R. So this is 4 halves plus another one. That's 5 halves r. So if you want to barely make it through a, a loop, you have to go to 2 and a half times the radius of the loop. And you'll just barely get through. Of course, with any real system, there would be some friction. So you'd probably want to start a little bit higher before you did your first test.